Hello guys, welcome back to another video, I hope you are doing okay. Now, before we start this tutorial, I would like to let you know that I've open sourced this project that you can see here on the simulator and I call it a TV series manager and what is it about? It's about an app that can show you your favorite TV shows and when is the next episode and even send you a notification on the day of the next episode to remind you for that. It's a pretty cool app that keeps me updated with uh, the TV series that I watched and I've open sourced it for you guys to go and implement new stuff, update the uh, user interface if you don't like it and put more features if you want to, anything that you really want. And you can see here, you can search for your favorite show, for example Game of Thrones and here it is, you can save it and the next episode is of 16th of July at 9 o'clock, so now I'm gonna save it and when I go to my favorites I can see it right here and the app is gonna notify me on 16th of July that the episode is coming out. It's a pretty cool app, it's powered by uh, TV Maze API, I'm gonna link everything on the description below. So yeah, if you want to go and contribute to that project, I would really appreciate it. And what I really want to show you today is this collection view right here. As you can see, uh, in this collection view, you have two, two cells per row. And also, while I scroll, you will see how those cells are animating while they're coming up. And I'm going to show you how you can do this transformation today. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can go down and they're shrinking. So let's go ahead and see how it's done. I have this uh, project created right here and I'm gonna delete this one. So let's go into our main storyboard and insert a collection view. So I'm gonna type UI collection view. And what is different collection view and table view? They're pretty similar, only that in collection views you have this extreme customization. You can customize it very much and make your apps look prettier than in a table view. And let's go and give it some constraints. I want to expand it through the whole uh, view. And I want to also connect the collection view data source and delegate to the view controller. So you right click and drag this and say data source and the collection view again to the view controller and say delegate. Now that we've connected this, we also want to go and drag the collection view and create an outlet to our view controller, which I'm going to call collection view. And that is all we need to do with the storyboard. Now you can go to our co uh, view controller and in here we want to do the pretty similar steps we do with the table view. We want to uh, conform to a delegate of the collection view and the data source and also to the delegate of flow layout. This flow layout is gonna give us this kind of scrolling that we, we're gonna see. So let's go and do this. UI collection view data source, UI collection view delegate, and also UI collection view delegate flow layout. And I'm gonna close this to make more space. Now it gives us an error because it needs to convert to the data source and this is number of sections in the collection view we're gonna return just one section now we want number of rows or items in the section and I'm gonna return 30 so we can scroll a bit and also cell for item at index path and this is gonna be let cell equals collection view the DQ reusable cell with identifier I'm gonna say cell ID for index path and also return cell. Now this cell ID actually what we need to do is go and put it in the storyboard so main storyboard in here I'm gonna open this you select the cell you go to the attributes and in here put the reusable identifier cell ID that's all. All right, now we come forward to this delegate. What we will now have to do is create the layout, the flow layout. So let's go into our view did load method and go and write this. So let layout 
equals a UI collection view flow layout. And we want to give some spacing in this layout between the items. So you can say layout dot minimum line spacing equals five. So the item which is under each item, how much spacing uh, it's gonna have. I'm gonna give it five. And also a layout dot minimum inter item spacing, which is the item that is next to it, how much spacing is gonna have. And this is gonna be five as well. And another thing you want to give is the cell itself in the collection view when to start. For example, if you don't want the cell to be stuck next to the collection view, you can give it some edge insets. And the way you do this, you say layout dot section inset equals UI edge insets and you create with top, left, right, bottom and right. Now from the top, I want it to be 20. From the left, I want it to be 16. Bottom, I want 10 and right 16. And the final thing you need to do is collection view dot collection view layout equals the layout. Now the collection view has this layout. And one more thing we need to do is give a size to the cell. So what we want to do, we want to create, we want to call this delegate size for item at index path. And the size that we want to give is let width Let's create this width, how much width we want the cell to have. Now, because I want only two items per row, what I will have to do is I will have to say self.view.frame.width divided by two because I want two items. And from that, I need to minus, so let me put this in brackets. And from that, I need to minus 21. The reason I need to minus 21 is because in here I put left or right 16. And also you need to take in consideration the in term spacing, which is five. So 16 plus five is 21. And you want to minus that. And that will give you the width of a cell for, uh, for you to have two cells in each row. And then you want to uh, return a CG size of width and float, width, the one that we created, and a height I'm gonna put, because I want it to be like a poster, I'll put the value of width plus 30. That will give me like a poster image. And in here, let's go and see cell dot background color, I'm gonna put equals color, literal, and let's put a red color. Now let's run this and see how it actually looks like. So here is uh, our collection view. As you can see, the collection view is usually starts from here. So the cell itself, it's pushed 16 points from the left, 20 from the top, five uh, space interim uh, spacing, and right 16 as well. And as you scroll, you will see the bottom one is 10. Now, I told you that I'm gonna show you how you can do this transformation while you are scrolling. This is kind of simple, but kind of complicated to explain. So hopefully I will do very well to explain to you guys. And what we need to call, and what we need to do is we need to create a function that will transform our cell. So let's go and write this function. Now. This function um, I'm gonna call transform and it's gonna call get a value of a cell of a UI collection view cell collection view cell and it's and like this and now now you need to get the cover frame of the cell where exactly this L is located into your view so what you do is you say let cover frame equals cell dot convert cg rect to ui view and the rect here is cell dot bounds and view is self dot view 
All right, now we get where exactly the cell is located into our view. And what you want to do, since we want to transform the cells that are from here and the and bottom, uh, you need to get the height of the collection view and get this part right here. So imagine it like being in three parts, the co whole collection view is three parts, and you want to get this last one, you will have to multiply the height of the collection view by two thirds. And the way we're gonna do this is let, and this variable I'm gonna call transform of offset y. So transform offset y, and this equals to a collection view dot bounds dot height times two thirds. And like this, we're getting the very bottom of the screen. And now what we want to do is we want to get the position of the cell as it goes up to scale. So we will have a percentage from zero to 100. And as we go up, we're gonna get a bigger percentage. So the way you're gonna do this is you will say let percentage percent actually equals and you will need to divide the cell position divided by this collection view height by subtracting also the transform offset y and like this you're getting the cells as it goes from up to down or how much you want it to scale for this percent we will need to get uh, we'll need to create a function and this function I'm gonna call uh, get percent and this will get a value of a CG float and it's also gonna return us a CG float now what you will need to do is you will need to have a lower and upper bound for this so let lower bound equals zero for zero percent and let upper bound i'm gonna call it u bound equals one for 100 percent and you want you want to check if the value uh, is bigger is actually smaller than the lower bound then we want to return uh, zero which means that the uh, item has scaled already to what we want so we return uh, the lower bound else if the value is bigger than the upper bound we want to return the upper bound which is gonna be the lowest uh, scaling it's gonna have which is 100% and otherwise we want to return the value itself which can be from 0 to 1 and those ones need to be CG float. Just like this. All right. And this percent is gonna be get percent of the value. Now, as I said, we need to get the uh, Y position of the frame of the cell, which is cover frame dot minimum minimum y minus the transform offset y and you want them to be together like this divided by the collection view dot bounce dot height minus the transform offset and you want to close those. So basically you're getting the position of the Y. And now that we have our percentage, we want to get uh, the minimum scaling it's gonna have is, so the minimum uh, size it's gonna be is 80% of its original size. So you need a variable that to uh, say max scale difference is gonna be 0 0.2 but not as a double you want it as a CG float now this will get us ma a maximum difference 80% and 
and you want to say let scale equals percent times max scale difference and now you have your scaling and you all you want to do is say cell dot transform equals to cg affine transform and you give a scale x and y and those scale x and y are 1 minus your scale and 1 minus your scale and like this your cell is transforming now where you want to call this this transform cell you want to call in your cell for item at index path so when the uh, first cells are loaded they get the correct transformation so you say transform cell and also you need it you need to call it when the scroll view is scrolling so since collection view is a subclass of uh, scroll view you can say scroll view did scroll and in here you want to say collection view dot visible cells dot for each so basically for each is a doing a for loop for all the visible cells but you can simply say it like this open and close brackets and say transform cell and you say dollar zero dollar zero is the each cell that passes through this for loop and let's go and run this and see how it looks like so as you can see at the bottom right here we have some cells that are very small and as I'm gonna start scrolling up you will see they're getting bigger and bigger and as I'm trying to scroll down they're getting smaller so it is this I hope uh, you guys understood it um, now there's a lot of customization you can have with collection views um, if you want to you can just play around or Google some uh, some examples people have done already and please do contribute to this uh, project it I really appreciate it and it will also uh, help you guys to work with other people's code of course the code right now is just mine but you will get the feeling to work with other people and see how they actually code and if you can understand other people code that will get you ready guys for when you go out and find an actual job in iOS development or any developer job you want. And that is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something new. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.